It's been a ride. Sitting here, uh, Chicago Bolster, and CJ Crawford. We're here with the current Oliver in the fifth world. Oliver Leslie Harrison, how you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Nice to see you here. Very pretty this morning, on an early uh, Monday morning. Thank you. A little bit hoarse, but yeah. That's been a lot of the uh, work you've been doing. That's been all the work that I've been doing. Shouting out orders and things you're trying to get. Uh, no, just to talking to the people. Yeah, just yeah. talking to, doing my job, doing what I do every day. So what's been your experience during this uh, election cycle? Uh, how has it been hitting the streets and just talking to people about their needs and, and what they've experienced with you over the last couple of years? It's, it, it's been fun for me. Um, I always enjoy campaigning. Um, it's, it, it's really, you never stop campaigning. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the things that we do in the ward, all of the meetings that I have, the different groups that I meet with, uh, we do that all year round. Mm -hmm. uh, so campaigning is no different. We just step it up a notch okay. and go extra hard. I got a series of questions here that I wanted okay. to ask you, so uh, hopefully you can jump right in. Uh, from your perspective, what are the most pressing issues in the community, and how is the alderman, you know, can you address those? Well, issues? I think there's several, and, okay. and I think they're all interconnected. Uh, you've got education, you've got crime, and you've got economic development. Okay. Uh, those being at the forefront, which are all in connect, interconnected, I think. Uh, I think you have to uh, look at uh, the crime that's being committed in the street. You have to look at um, the, the lack of jobs and lack of education and its contribution to uh, that. Okay. So I think that um, with those, those issues um, being inter interconnected and inter intertwined um, are the ones that are most serious and, and they are the ones that affect people's day-to-day -day lives mostly. Okay. Um, in, in looking at that, I think you have to be strategic about how you handle it. You can't just point to one and expect the others to go away. Mm -hmm. So I think that you have to have a strategic plan. I think that you have to go after it step by step and understand that these issues were not created overnight and they're not going to be solved overnight. So do you have a strategic plan to address those three things? Well, I've actually been working my strategic okay. plan. Uh, you know, first you've got to build, if you're building any kind of a house, you've got to have a foundation. Mm -hmm. And so the foundation in the ward is the infrastructure. Okay. You know, so when you see things like uh, the medians on Stony Island and the grass, or you see the new uh, double prong lights that light up the neighborhood that, that go a half a block in, mm -hmm. uh, when you see things like that, that's building on the infrastructure. Uh, the economic development component you start seeing when you start seeing changes in the different businesses that are there. Or you actually start seeing businesses that didn't used to be there come into the neighborhood. That also brings jobs to the community, but you have to nurture those. And then you have to create um, the, the economic development and the, the, the nurturing uh, through programs because you have people at different levels. Uh, you've got people that, that, that are all the way to the top and you've got people that are all the way on the bottom. And you've got to make sure that you have something for everything, everybody. So, you know, if you start with a program like Operation Clean Slate, you know, which takes those that, are, that have had some issues in their life and, and provides a surrounding and nurturing environment uh, where they can not only get some work experience, but also there's a classroom element to it to start bringing them in, in touch with the community. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they do that I just think is wonderful is to learn how to interact with people and how to talk to people. Uh, you know, because after we've been hit on the head by, by life's hard knocks so much, we forget that people are people. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that they have to do is to interact with people and greet people and, and, and see how people respond to them. And, and, and I know that that makes a difference. Okay. So... Operation Clean Slate is a, is a program, I guess, that, that I guess uh, takes a person where they are and helps yes. give them the, the skill set that they need to move on to the next level. Are there other programs such as that that you can point to? That well, as, as an offshoot of the Operation Clean Slate, we have Operation Green Street. Okay. And um, so we're looking at the way that uh, the economy is going green, and, and so we wanted to start training people in some of the greener areas and, and how to keep the area green. So that's just an, another example of how the offshoot uh, comes from. You start with one uh, program and then others grow out of it. And we talked about a couple of things. We talked about violence. Well, I guess we kind of touched on violence maybe. We talked about infrastructure, education, mm -hmm. economic development. Uh, are any of those things outside of the scope of what you can do as an alderman? 
Well, they, not necessarily outside of the scope, but those are some of the things that we do not have control over. Okay. So, example, when you talk about the crime, and, you know, everybody says, well, what are you going to do about crime? Well, one of the things that people haven't been paying attention to is, of course, the 800-pound gorilla in the room, uh -huh. you know, which is the person that appoints the superintendent and the commanders and that determines uh, how resources get allocated. Uh -huh. Uh, that's not done at the automatic level. I think that it's very important for people to understand. Mm -hmm. The other thing is community participation. Mm -hmm. um, not just in terms of trying to find out who to blame, but actually what role do I play and then how can I do something to change it. Okay. Uh, that's the attitude that we have to have. Instead of looking for somebody to blame, let's look about, uh, at what we can do to help change it. So in a perfect world, what would be the entities that you would kind of handpick to work with you to address some of that change here because maybe there's somebody that's watching this video that can say, okay, I can get involved and, and play a part. Well, well, I think, you know, you, you can start right on your block. You can start right in your building, uh, you know, by, by just knowing who your neighbor is, uh, paying attention to what's going on in the street, uh, paying attention to your surroundings, um, you know, and, 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 and not settling or trying to uh, cover for somebody. A lot of the problems that we see are, you know, issues that, that we bring um, to the community and we turned a blind eye on it because we're getting some kind of benefit from it. So we can't complain about drug sales and still be sitting up smoking a joint. You know, because uh, we're, 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 we're part of the problem. And so it's not just a little bit of weed. Weed is illegal. I mean, so you can't be playing in the game and then say, oh no, not me. You, you got to go through it and you got to recognize it and you got to accept that responsibility. Spoiling all the models, spending more meals, but charging not the signs. Like this is impossible. Just read between the lines. It says I am possible. Hey, hey.